Welcome back, friends. Fun series to start things off. Joshi, I know you had some words about it, but hey, the next series we have on the horizon, this one should be fun. AoE going up against Team Fish Taco. We were talking about it a little bit earlier. Team Fish Taco kind of seems like the steamroller if you steamroll sort of team. So they're always really exciting to see them play. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to these two teams because I didn't feel as though Fear got to play that last series, right? It didn't feel as though they were necessarily in the place that they were going to be playing. But now AoE and Taco, they will always come to scrap. And the way that both these teams play <laughs> just means that they're going to be butting heads the entire time. Yeah, I, that's what I love so much is like you get that still, you know, want to try things. You even heard it from Keel, right? Like you want to try things because you want to test yourself. You want to make sure that you're getting these kinds of things under your belt early rather than later. And you get that feeling for both these two teams, right? And you get a lot of strengths from specific members and specific showings, but it's about bringing the holistic thing together. A hundred percent. So I'm excited because I feel like the scrappy, scrappy games are always on the broadcast that I'm not on. <laughs> so this is going to be a really fun way to be ending off our week. But let's start talking about the highlights of this Team Fish Taco team to be starting things off here. Yeah, watching Team Fish Taco play, right? Yeah, I wasn't supposed to say this, but they only seem to win games one way, and that's by you know, blowing their opponent's backs out, right? There's not a whole lot left that they can really do. They love moving as a group, and when they just have everybody moving at the same time, it just feels as though Team Fish Taco is kind of this unstoppable force. You gotta move it to the groove it. Uh, but especially now, Rose Thorn is trying to find that groove with the team, right? This is a, a guy we've seen go up and down throughout the, the developmental scene here, and, and it's been really, really cool to see him find his place with an interesting roster in its own right in NXI at support, something I never thought I'd see beforehand. But specifically, I think Onet has had a lot of really, really big come-up performances. I know he tweeted about his Victor uh, game because he was an absolute giga chat on that. But I also went back to look at his stats. It was his first competitive Victor win. <laughs> so I think out of like uh, eight games total. Uh, but I think Onet in total has been a big trendsetter for Team Fish Taco because he does play with that confidence and that comes with a lot of say. And then narrowing in on this AoE gold roster, it was something that we actually spoke to quickly with Keel before his interview, talking about the fact that, yeah, AoE is the you know, bottom of the standings here, but with the four wins, I mean, we've definitely seen the standings are a lot more farther apart within teams over in NACL before. So sure, it might not be the most, but it's definitely something that this team's got for them. Yeah. And for me, when I watch AoE, the thing that I consistently see that is really interesting to watch is it oftentimes feels as though AoE gold is mostly three players. Will, Darkwings, and Breezy, they sync up, and if they are on the same page, they are dominating teams as they go. And unfortunately, they've also had a bunch of games recently where they have not had their full roster, right? We know that yeah. for some reason, when they were in LA, when they were playing in Ontario, California, they were having issues with their power. They're having issues with the internet. Now that they are playing from different places <laughs> again, they are still running into the same issues. I I can relate with the internet issues. That <laughs> is that is hundred percent. That is just a you know Canadian debuff over here. But <laughs> hey, it's a team that's Get gone. Get that bag of milk. <laughs> oh no. Those are fighting words, all right? We'll bring it so don't, alive. <laughs> don't do that, but... Uh... <laughs> I, I, I do want to talk about these clips, though, because uh, yeah. I, I thought it was really interesting looking back at both these two teams in their recency, and, and specifically this series against Team Liquid for Darkwings. When you see Darkwings on a little bit more utility-focused, more team-centric picks, you find a lot of strength when that cohesion comes through that you were mentioning. And I want to see them lean to that, but still be able to find some playback through the other pieces. And that is super important to highlight early on in draft for AoE, but you get to see a lot of moments like this from Darkwing where like, he is literally an unstoppable force in a lot of these fights. And while they did come out to lose this because of a couple decision-making issues, you want these kinds of compositions for AoE. And I think this is really something that AoE is going to have to draft around, right? If you can create opportunities for Darkwings to look good, it'll help out quite a bit. But he is going up against one of the most confident players that we have yeah. in the entire league in Onet. And Onet has been a player that has been interesting for me to watch because he plays right on the edge of what is possible. And sometimes, yeah. again, doesn't go well. But other times, he just looks like a genius. <laughs> and we'll see in some of these clips as well that come up. I, I really, really love a lot of the moves that he represents because... 
you see some of that confidence come out in his play, and a lot of the catch, like this, bam, instantly going in there with the Timbers, it separates the fight so much that it makes it impossible for EG to really find a way back in with the composition that Taco had. And then you have moments where he's buffering a lot of things, and in this clip specifically, when you get a lot of that focus towards mid lane, that's how he builds that confidence. And then you go into the next game where you have a, a lot, or next series rather, uh, in terms of events and you have a, a fight where he's literally pulling get back off of the side where he was in an established flank and then comes in and makes the difference watching the way that they play has been really interesting i think comparing contrasting ona and dark wings uh today will tell us a lot about how this series will go because both of them uh we take a look at some of their stats and again ona is a player who is constantly playing on the edge but he's coming up uh, heads often enough, right? We actually know yeah. that he is positive. He's actually got the highest gold difference at 15 of any mid laner. And that's partly because when he's going off, he's going off, right? Watching him <laughs> play things like the Gragas into APA's Annie was like a new uh, record setting opportunity for this team. With this B and this highlight for today, Mazel, I see the look on your face. I know exactly <laughs> where we're going to. This is the yes. Mazel.GFX that we have, considering this is the matchup we're highlighting. We got that hashtag Dangwings, <laughs> the hashtag O Nation. Get those in chat. Make sure you're spamming those. Make sure you're adding them on Twitter if you want to add uh, ad. Uh, hashtag NACL to that. Maybe you'll get your tweets on screen. But it's Dank Wings versus O Nation. We got confidence from O Nation, but we also have consistent utilitarian play from the Suede yesterday. I really want to see from Dark Wings. You also get to see Dark Wings is no slouch when it comes to early laning. All right. It might not be the biggest numbers. You might not be able to see them, but they're all positive. <laughs> I think <laughs> they can see them. Take your word for it. Take your word for it. Take my word for it. You have a lot of positivity from Dark Wings in the early game. We're on the other side where we're talking about confidence. We're talking about some of that buildup for Onat. Yes, highlighting his tweet, his confidence through the roof on that victor, but it's establishing a lot of those carry picks for him as well. Yeah. Now, I am looking up real quick. How often has hashtag Dankwings been used? <laughs> oh, no. Somebody? Probably something with, like, like bones or, like, bone-in wings it, or something. Oh, like, oh, man, really this is like It wings. might be for something else. We can take it over. That's how Twitter works, right? If we're the ones who use it enough, it suddenly becomes about dark wings. Exactly. Make sure you're spamming in chat, all right? <laughs> Make sure you're spamming in chat. Also, I just want to know how much do you charge for a custom-made graphic? Because these are just been, oh, like, you know, for for these players that we support, we're free. Well, no, <laughs> one sub from chat right now. Well, oh, well, from from me, Come yes. On. You have to sub. I've already subbed. I'm done with that. That's already. I, I'm like tier three for the next year. <laughs> Both of them. Uh, you know, shoot. <laughs> so yeah, any any players looking to up their Twitter game, make sure to be hitting up Mizell for some custom-made graphics so you can be. Rolling in those Twitter impressions, rolling in those follows, and of course, roll on in chat. Make sure you can spam in chat, not just your hashtag Dankwings or hashtag Onation. Make sure to be spamming which team that you're cheering on here for, between AoE and Team Fish Taco. Right now, Team Fish Taco, there's That's, a steam roll in the boat. Where's the Dankwings? All right, start adding the Dankwings to it. Maybe you get the percentage going on. <laughs> I, I'm just still just taken aback by the least emphatic sheesh I've ever heard from anyone. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> you go sheesh and just sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. <laughs> You gotta get the, the layers. We're, we're, we're gonna have a little bit more coming through, right? You know, yeah, what we were, we're talking about, right? Mazel's here, Sarah's up here in terms of like the sheesh tier list. So, <laughs> but let's, still. Hear, let's hear yours, Joshi. That's the, that's yeah. the question. Yeah. You know, you gotta get the arm in there. Sheesh! Oh goodness! <laughs> that, that was there you go. <laughs> that was that was something. But hey, we still have a we still have a moment or two before the draft before we hop into this. So obviously we set the stage between these players and how we think there's going to be. Considering that both teams are willing to experiment, put themselves out here. How do we feel like that's going to be clashing up against each other? I mean, I think we talked so much about the mid lane, right? And I. That is going to be a big opportunity for both players. We have seen that when Team Fish Taco win their games, it's oftentimes been off the back of Ona and Rose Thorn moving together to take over a lot of these games. When they have some good early invades, there's not a lot that other teams can do against them. But again, for AoE Gold, they oftentimes need that third piece. They've been needing Breezy to join in on a lot of these plays and a lot of these invades. And they don't generally go into the enemy jungle as much as they just take down people in the mid lane itself.
I think we do finally have our game ready as my internet's definitely stumbling a little bit. So this might be the greatest, <laughs> the greatest exit timing in history. So super excited to get to this game one and get to our draft. I will see you two on the other side with hopefully some better internet. Woo. Hoping you're not cursing for links. internet for internet gods to, to help you out, Sierra. But we will welcome you back with open arms. We're getting into game number one of our second series. It is AOE Gold versus Team Fish Taco. And Again, all eyes on mid lane, but before that, we got to get into what we're banning away, what kind of picks we're trying to take away specifically. Right now, it's the Olaf, which is being banned against Taco. Huge stuff in that department because they've had a lot of comfort in that ban, or in that pick, rather. We also get the Azir ban towards Dark Wings, a comfort pick for him. Yeah, I mean, he's got three games of it already so far this split, and it has been interesting to kind of watch how AoE Gold have been playing, right? They had this big Annie experiment for a lot of uh, the middle of the first round Robin, and unfortunately it hasn't worked out particularly well for AoE, but we also know that Onat has been loving playing this champion at the same time, and... I think that'll be a big focus for both of these teams is whether or not they still want to be experimenting with this fire child, right? Just the opportunity to be really aggressive every single time, but instead they're focusing on trying to take away some of the junglers that they really don't want their opponents to have. Well, we saw the Kindred last series and uh, gl maybe glad that it's banned away. Pretty, pretty good champ, pretty good champ there. Uh, would expect a lot of those aggressive junglers to be banned away. That's something where in the track record right now for AoE, Will his his amount of influence in a lot of these games is unheard of right like he is yeah. the shining point it feels like in a lot of these aggressive jungle matchups trying to whittle that down he still has the rex i still has some other choices available to him but we also get some mid lane meta priority in the nico and the leblanc and a first pick for will will be a Sejuani. is it for will though like that's Maybe. the thing that's I guess so it could weird be for right concept. like <laughs> Vi is still available, Wukong is still available, they are going for the Sejuani first here. I I would be surprised if this was another misclick, another mechanical misplay. Don't do it, Josie. Don't select. put that evil on them, alright? Don't yeah. do this. This is very clearly something heavily prepared by AoE Gold. Uh, they're going to be grabbing this right now. I have not been seeing this champion nearly as often in, sec in uh, some solo queue games, but it <laughs> just passes the buck, right? It's like, Team Fish Taco, what do you want to play? We're going to be trying to counter. We've already picked up our engage tools so we know that we can fight. But Team Fish Taco, they're like, ooh, okay, well, let's go ahead and grab up this Varus for ourselves. And the Iron as well, very difficult for the Sejuani to navigate these jungle paths. Excuse me. Well, I guess it's a Wukong. It's still fine. It is right? going to be the Wukong. I, I was hoping right there with you. I had my bingo card yesterday trying to get Iverns, but uh, never got one either. It is something else that's risen in a lot of priority, uh, but specifically for spawn is this Varus. So I like, love that comfort going over to Taco. But you also just get Rose Thorn's early proactivity on the Wukong. That can be so influential. And that's where you were hovering around the conversation for mid-jungle duos. We actually get the Tristana locked in with a bit of that flexibility for the pick. The Jax quickly follows. There's definitely a lot of opportunities here for AoE Gold to be aggressive, right? The Sichuan and the Jax has been this combination that makes it really tough to play against because of how quickly you can get that first stun down, how easily yeah. you can pair up with the Counter-Strike in order to make sure that people are not going to be going anywhere. And so, there's a big challenge here for Lunasia, but one of the few characters okay. that can just be like, oh, crowd control? Sorry, <laughs> don't care about that one, Peace. is going to be this Cassante going up for Lunasia. And I definitely feel as though this is setting up Team Fish Taco uh, to have this really big frontline and some engage tools to be really aggressive into AoE gold. They have uh, the virus ultimate to lock down any of these frontliners and blow that target up before they move on to the backline. Just about that target selection, though, as we're getting into the second phase, we do get that Alistar ban uh, that you wanted picked earlier. Uh, not going to be able to get that one over to AoE Gold side, but specifically now looking at how we've got a bit of a mismatch for Taco, what the focuses can be for AoE. Right now, it's the Ari. Yeah. I mean, the Ari has been so good for Ona as well. It definitely feels as though Team Fish Taco is probably being pushed towards the Annie a little bit more, but they also have showcased a lot of familiarity with the Gragas here in the mid lane. And mm. I'll be honest, I'm doing a lot of looking into the Sejuani because we have not seen this in North America basically at all. But I mean, Europe has been playing it, LCK has been playing it, uh, LPL has been playing it a little mm -hmm. bit as well. It's just to see this come out in such a drastic difference in the local meta is still 
wild to me. I actually hit the uh, Akali ban towards Dark Wings as well, yeah. so maybe trying to hover his picks a little bit more, get that even matchup for Onat. But you do wonder, is the Victor fan coming? Oh, no, it's the Syndra. Nope, the Syndra. Anyway. Okay. I mean, that's really pushing Onat, right, too, the Victor yeah. that he was tweeting about, but also the Annie that we know has been really good. Uh, the big question, though, for me is, for AoE Gold, is is Link going to be playing this Tristana like we might initially expect, or is this going to be something that Dark Wings is going to be I would love to see Dark piloting? Wings. Yeah. I mean, giving Dark Wings the tools to be more aggressive every single time, I think, is the way to help AoE find some of their success. When Dark Wings is actually getting kills, that's when they've been winning quite a bit of their games. But so far, fortunately, Dark Wings has been having a lot of games where they have zero kills, one kill, not necessarily yeah. participating. You need to set them up to have some of these strong early games in order to snowball them the game. I actually see the Ash locked in, which is something else that yeah. had seen some rise in play in 1312. Uh, yeah. Cross competitive, but it is also paired up with the Braum. You got the Frail Your Bot Lane here, Joshi. Yeah, I mean, you also have the Sichuani as well, going back to set one of TFT uh, for <laughs> oh, AoE no. Gold. Whereas Team Fish Taco, they are playing a little bit more modern sets that we are currently seeing, right? They are still looking at the Kaisa to potentially pair up into the mid lane, but instead they are going to oh, be Okay, I was like, Annie. ooh, that'd be so spicy. Yeah. Tristana versus Varus. He's this so is the cool. most played champion, though, for Onat so far in yeah. summer. Three and three so far as... Uh-oh! Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs! Uh -oh. We're back! Okay, we're back. Oh, oh we're, we're back. gone! Oh, we're, we're back! back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to find out what is actually going on in the, behind the scenes. But as we take a look at this one, there is a lot of tools from both sides to get fights started on their terms. But the question is, how are you actually going to be starting these fights? Who's going to be the yeah. one pulling the trigger? Because if you get the uh, tools to start the fights first, it is probably going to be going your direction because of how much burst both sides have as well. Whoever gets locked down at the beginning of the fight is probably going to die. I really want to see this comp pulled off from AoE, though. I always love seeing the Tristanas in mid, but also it's about comboing that and figuring out how to get this double marksman to fruition, right? Because yeah. double marksman's one thing we always know. It's a, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, even if it's two marksmen, because you have to go with safety. You have to find a way to get to that scaling portion of the game and not get picked out. And as we hit the rift for the first time of our second series, it's AoE gold on blue. And Team Fish Taco on red. I'm really glad I didn't get baited because I saw that Darkwings and Concept had not yet traded their champions, and I was like, okay, yeah, but there's there's no way. No, right? no there's no, no, no way Concept no way. is going to be playing the Tristana and Darkwings is playing the Jax. But the big thing here that we will have to look at is that in order for Team Fish Taco in the mid lane to contest the push that Darkwings will have this game, he will need to blow a lot of mana. That also means that he will have to be very careful about how he manages his stun bar in order to try and actually contest some of this early play. And so, Darkwings will have a lot more frame to move around the map for a little while than Onat will, unless Rose Thorn can find some opportunities to put Onat in a position where he can threaten all in. Very true. It's going to be crucial to look for. As uh, make sure you're using the hashtag, hashtag NACL on Twitter to get your tweets on our screens. Also, just get the community bumping. Uh, make sure you're also using hashtag O Nation or uh, hashtag Dank Wings if you want to support these mid laners. See all the things, I guess. If you want to subscribe now, all you get the all things. these cool emotes. But you also support our players. 50% of the revenue from the subs does go to our players and teams. So make sure you're hitting that sub button. Yeah. Support these lovely people that we see on our screens every day. And as we take a look, right, I was a little bit surprised to see the Sichuani coming out for Will, but it is going to be uh, him playing this. He is going to be going for a mirrored clear up against Rose on the far side of the map. There's enough vision on uh, in top Team Fish Taco's jungle that they should have a pretty good idea of where he is actually moving around the map. They are already pinging out. It's like, hey, we know where he is likely to be. And it is so tough for Rosethorn to try and find any early plays. See, I, honestly, at this point, I keep just wanting to call him Dank Wings now. I can't do that. I, <laughs> I'm a I mean, you can. Uh, it's dark, but his name is Dark Wings, Joe. She can't do that to him. Unless I just like message and be like, yo, can I just call you Dank Wings from now on? Yeah, I mean, just put the sunglasses on as you do it. I'm 
Sure, true, he was totally true. fine with it, but Will, going for a bit of invade, he knows he has the party from his bottom side of the map, and Sejuani That's does these camps so fast. I'm trying to remember who I was playing. It was with Axeman, and he was like, oh my god, Sejuani clears camps so fast, and look at that. He just comes yep. through. Takes down the blue buff almost instantly. Darkwings even gets a spot out Rose Thorn. Yeah, that's huge. That's what I was gonna highlight. Is like the push from Darkwings is so beautifully timed. Oh. Right now, the synchronicity for AOE is looking nice. That's a vocab word right there. But you also see that Darkwings got both little wolves taken away from Rose Thorn. Yep. Like it just it just feels as though Team Fish Taco not able to make any early plays happen. And now Rose Thorn moving towards the far side of the map. I don't think he ever saw Will, but should have a good idea that Will was in his side of the jungle mm -hmm. based on the fact that Darkwings was moving up, based on the fact that Breezy was starting to move towards the uh, blue buff there. And now, Will might actually be able to get up here in time. For oh, so close. Nice little move. Will stop his blue buff take. But uh, I, I will just say I, I was highlighting, you know, Darkwings on utilitarian picks. The Swain I really like because it influences a lot of the way the AOE play, but I also don't mind when they just all in on Darkwings and say, you know what, we'll grab oh. utility for Lynx, we'll try and get something going, but Lynx needs to be safe down here to make sure that this Ash can be a bit supportive, but as well as a little bit damaging, as the double marksman yeah. composition will need to come online for AOE. Also really like the awareness there from Breezy, holding on to the door, and making sure he doesn't throw up the shield until Spawn actually throws out the Q, stopping the bulk of the damage that was going to be coming through from Team Fish Taco. It is going to be a cleanse that has already been lost. Something we haven't really spent a lot of time talking about today has been NXI on the support, and it might not matter as Rosethorn comes down. I'm going to try to take the brunt of the... AOE engage as Rose Thorn is coming down. Flash has come through. Everyone knows what is happening now, but Darkwings is coming down here. Breezy, is he going to go down first? Blood over to spawn. That's huge. But you could get some resets oh. here. Darkwings going forward. Hashtag Dankwings in the chat as you get a little bit back for AOE. It's going to be a kill going over to Lynx and spawn. Both AD carries getting that little bit of extra tools to play with. But in the mid lane, still Onat not committing the teleport to come down. I mean, it's not unlocked yet. So he's just able to continue pushing this mid lane build up a bit of a lead. But he has to be very careful because this is a dangerous spot. Look at this convergence. And Darkwings is on his way. We had a deja vu of this, it feels like, as Flash has to come out from oh. Onat. He's still oh. going to go down. And Darkwings comes up with his kill. Yeah, Onat being forced to use the Flash doesn't even get the wave into a spot where it is fully crashing. AoE definitely feels as though they're coming out ahead from all of these plays. And importantly, Breezy will Darkwings sinking up relatively early on in this game. And look at that. Darkwings actually just holding still, waiting next to his own Nexus Church to go for this teleport. Is so convinced that they're going to be going for this play. And as they start going for this, we do see that AoE uh, trying to make all of these plays happen commits to bringing Darkwings down. But the immediate aftermath that Onat on this Annie and not able to get himself into a spot where he can safely recall away. He still yeah. had to stay in the mid lane and ends up getting caught. And didn't get any plates much going on in mid lane. A lot of damage on Darkwings when he comes back, and that is the power of the Annie once we hit level 6. It is still an ADC, and we all know that story all too well. Yeah, wow. Darkwings, I mean, staying still very heavily does end up getting tapers, but takes a lot of damage, and that's kind of what we were saying, is if Ona is strong enough to just threaten all ends up to Darkwings, he can prevent the Tristana from moving, and now it's Team Fish Taco, even without the tippers, still ready to start up the dragon. Really nicely done. We'll be spotted out by that Hawk shot from Lynx. Maybe we just moving around to the pit a little bit. We have this uh, early objective for Taco. Really nice. Oh, okay. A little bit of a late contest. Will's just going for this. Uh, yeah, there's no way, Will. Right. Yeah, all right, but he like he okay. needs to be a little careful. Dragon doesn't have going over Hex Dragon to Taco, and it'll be nice for them to kind of try to build this up, right? They're trying to get to a point where level six is cohesive a little bit. You get Rose Thorn and NXI as central engages, or potentially a flash from Onat with the Tippers, and that's how you're picking apart the team comp of AOE. And if you can do that, right, we were saying that whoever starts the fight first will be the ones very likely to actually win the engagement. But Will now level 6, moving towards the top half of the map, and Rose Thorn must be close. Oh no, he's probably not close. He's only got 31 CS at this point. Oh! Mine. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a feels bad, man. Rose Thorn about down almost 30 CS, which is just insane. Has yeah. this been that fast clear you were talking about earlier for the Sejuani of Will? 
Yeah, and this Wukong, I mean, the big thing you always look at with the monkey is when does it actually hit the Divine Center? If it hits it before 10 minutes, you're on good pace. If you hit it by about 12 minutes, you're still going to be all right. But this is going to be a really late Divine Sunder as... Oh! Not committed. Noodle fight! Noodles! For now. Is These it pasta gonna... noodles or Rocks. pool noodles, though? You decide. I decide or Twitch chat decides? You, Matt, in Twitch chat, probably. Did you just call me Matt? No, I said I was going to say, could you imagine... Okay. A if likely it, story. Had, no, no, because I was gonna say, could you imagine if you had a pool noodle sized pasta noodle? Mm. And then it just started getting weird because like, I don't want that. That sounds awful. That is it already cooked? Tasty. Is it not cooked? Then you're wondering, is it sticky? Like, is it, is it just a hard? Then, then it's gonna break if it's not cooked. It's just gonna be easily broken. Yeah. Oh, where's the old? Where's the old? Noodles, noodles, noodles! All right. Well, you're getting baited, Josh. Getting baited. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Lunasia is going for the ults and spots where he doesn't necessarily have the third Q charged up to try and catch concept as they jump away. But still, the Fish Taco, uh, down a little bit in gold across this map, but they do have the first dragon. The Hexic Dragon is a good one. But AoE are also lining up on the bottom side, but they don't have their jungler in this, order to actually make any of these plays happen. This kind of jungle difference is not something you see normally. I'm really wondering how Rosethorn gets himself out of this one, because it's not like he has camps elsewhere to pick up and try to catch up, right? Like, he is authentically behind, like, 20-plus CS. Yeah. I think one of the other big things that is making it even worse is the fact that Lynx and Breezy have, for the most part, been pushed up in the lane. They have the priority to go invade Rosethorn's jungle, and Spawn and NXI are not in a position to help out whenever Rosethorn wants to go into their opponent's side. And... We have seen that the games that Team Fish Taco have won most emphatically have been ones where Rosethorn is already invading the jungle early on in the game. Nice buffer. That's really good. You have to see that kind of combo come through because that yeah. will literally save Darkwing's life every single time. Yeah. And also, I mean, just the amount of damage he doesn't take because the ult goes out. Ooh. Now we got a bit of a re-engage, like you were saying in the draft. Spawn crucial at locking things down, and he comes up with the kill indeed. Yeah, I mean, Breezy, not there. I don't really know what else to say about it. They try and contest it. They throw out the ultimates, but there's no, there's no fight, right? That's a two v three. You should know it's a two v three at that point, and ultimately just a free kill getting handed over to Spawn, and we set Spawn up earlier, right, about one of these players who we have been really excited about the increased aggression coming mm -hmm. out from spawn. He's already got the static shift completed just after 10 minutes. Oh. Ooh. Will, coming in. Oh, now with a little bit of confidence in mid lane of his own. Being able to outstep Will's engage. Won't be going down just yet, but his flash was burned, so that'll be revisited. Yeah. And would you look at that? Darkwing's Breezy and Will moving together, huh, trying to who, find these who, plays. Who called mm. that one out? Mm. It's almost as though it is the same game plan they have had for all of their games so far. And now AoE, I mean, that's going to be the big thing, right? Concept and Lynx have been operating largely on their own throughout a lot of these games. But we already see that Lynx does have the static shift completed down the bottom side, as does Spawn as Darkwing's. Wow. Stun right to the face as the <laughs> doesn't that that'll just happen every time probably. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that Darkwing's choosing to go with the Kraken Slayer, right? Because it will help the front to back team fights. But one of the things that Tristana has historically often struggled with is the ability to play in this early mid-game, right? When you're on one item, it kinda doesn't matter what the item is. Tristana sucks. And when you get to your second and third item, that's when you really start to take off. And so it was the play for a long time. Do you remember this, Mazel, when you would play bottom lane Tristana and you would rush the Static Shiv just to be able to push out the wave and not interact for a long time? Yeah, it, it's a way to do it. It's a yeah. way to, to be efficient. You do have this uh, Rift Arrow being pretty efficient. Oh, is yeah. it going to be efficient, though? Is it going to get the two... Ch oh, yep. there we go. A little delayed, but they got it. Nice little yeah. charge from AoE. Does give them a lot of pressure from mid lane to move to this is Dragon Pit. Yeah, watch the 80 carries for the engage. You don't say that very often. We got both archers coming through this time around. Dark Wings pushing out the mid lane as well. Whoever pulls the trigger first, very likely to take control of the fight. And now Ona has to move. But as he comes back, could be in a good flanking position. But Team Fish Taco just handing it over. They do hand it over as uh, Dragons traded. Maybe not handing it over. 
okay. as freely as AoE wanted it. He's got yeah. Onat over Onat. here, does have the tippers going in, re-engage there as Rose Thorn trying not to go down, trying to take down Breezy, and so far Spawn's got to kill the dragon, goes over to Will though, as it is traded back and forth, NXI caught in the middle of a storm of AoE. Okay, I said whoever started the fight first was probably going to be the ones who win it, but they both start the fight at the same time. And this time it's AoE coming out on top of that one. Darkwing with three kills at this point, bringing in concept as well to help out a little bit towards the end. But they will not only get the fight, they also get the dragon. They will also get this mid lane turret, a ton of money suddenly getting God. put in the hands of AoE. And crucially, on one of the players that we keep asking about, right, is Darkwing going to have one of these clutch games? Is he going to have the lead to play with? And this time the answer is yes. But watch this. Both teams engage at the exact same time, right? Rosethorn and NXI go in one direction at the same time. Will and Darkwings go towards the other. So both leagues and owner are like, wait, yeah. guys, guys, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> I can't what? see what what's happening. <laughs> Both of them just oh. running around, but luckily AoE, their half the fight wins uh, the you know the dive faster than also, Team Fishacos does. I'm just saying, if I'm not seeing Dank Wings in chat, I'm gonna be upset with all of you. Dank this wings. man is popping off on the Tristana. I was wanting utility picks, but they have gone all in on the Tristana for Dark Wings, and so far looking so good. About to be on that second item. Ona hasn't even finished his first yet. As he should be backing maybe soon, but needing to respond to pot lane since Taco don't have a mid lane to defend anymore. They don't. That's definitely going to be rough. I Sorry, I was catching up on the production chat. I, yeah, I, I giggled at this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm just being casually gaslitted, gaslit, gaslighted. I don't know what to do here by my uh, by my team, but you know yeah, it's there, fun. There's some jokes that I definitely should not make on broadcast, but uh, and I'm actually not going to make them. Normally I say that. Say <laughs> yeah, it I was anyway. say, usually you just go for it, anyways. But all right. But now look at this. The big thing here is we got two players who are both very strong, each on opposite sides. You have Spawn, who now has three kills and building towards the more uh, wizard bar style, where you're going to be going yeah. with the Nash's Tooth next. But AOE, they have Dark Wings, who has the item completed, and when Tristana gets to two, three items, that's when they can really take control of the game. Uh, as I cannot see things right now, I'm sure I'll get a refresh here soon. Joshi, you're going to have to take control. I mean, that's the problem, is I also can't see what's going on. Oh, oh I well. refreshed, and now I can see that uh, <laughs> AoE are going for the Rift Herald on the other side of the map. Nobody's died, at the very least. And so Team Fish Taco are going to be giving up another neutral objective. And one of the things I always love when I have uh, Tristanas or Ziggs, or generally Yordles in the game, is whenever they go for one of these turrets, the turret is going to die. And now yeah. that you have the Rift Herald, we saw that in our previous series, uh, the Gragas and the Rift Herald moving together end up taking top tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, True. the Nexus a Nexus turret and an inhibitor all at once. This is absolutely something that Darkwings can try and do as well if they link up with the Rift Herald. We'll see uh, now that the rain is gone. You can see clearly now. Um, and I do wonder, especially because we were talking a little bit about how this team comp for AoE comes together. Taco, uh, they do have a lot of that lockdown. We've already seen it kind of work for them so yeah. far. But they've got to start getting a, a lot of vision preemptively around objectives because the straight up turn and fight combination from AoE is just terrifying. Yeah. I mean, that is the big question, right? Like, if these two teams were even, uh, the team that was starting the fight was usually going to win. Yeah. Now it is a lot less clear for Team Fish Taco because their burst is behind the curve, right? And I guess more importantly, the tanks that they will be hitting are ahead of the curve. Will and Breezy yeah. are now both strong enough to potentially survive the initial output of damage. And once you hit that point, it becomes so much more difficult for Team Fish Taco to try and take these more balanced fights. They've got to be very aggressive. they got to start looking for picks. But that is the Team Fish Taco specialty, right? Especially for Onet. He will go for yeah. these Flash Ultimates. And if he's right, he looks like a genius. He can be the difference maker, something we highlighted in the draft. Now Taco trying to move to even up the defensive structures Ooh. in mid. 
Trying to turn a fight on a Breezy, but he takes Ooh. that fight and brings it right oh. back. He got double TPs all in from AoE. They say, we call your oh. bluff, and they're giving him a nice good how do you do. As two quick falls, Dark Wings goes in with his rocket jump, and it's looking all gold right now for AoE. They're not even low, right? Breezy is the lowest member of the team, and he's still at half HP. And AoE, they take that fight cleanly. They are going to move over towards the Dragon, and this is just looking so strong from AoE. I was expecting a lot more of butting of head, but the fact that AoE do such a good job at resisting uh, the initial engage from Team Fish Taco and then turn it around just makes it completely untenable for Team Fish Taco. I'm sorry, all you a o hashtag O Nation fans out there, but it's a hashtag, hashtag no Dank nation. Wings right now. Yeah, <laughs> you say Dank hashtag. Wings? I said Dank Wings. Okay. Mm. Dang, man, your ears, you gotta clean them up. <laughs> mm. I, after what happened mm. earlier, I, I don't take any of your questions. <laughs> I don't take any of your questions anymore. You don't have any right. I, don't, uh, I have not earned it. <laughs> You have not earned victory this day. All right, okay. The pro the producers are agreeing with you. This Everybody's time. turning to my side. Yes, let's go. All right. Uh, Breezy's trying to turn over a little bit of the side of Taco here, though. They are fully moving up towards this top side for AOE, and I mean, right now it's just an outer tower in their eyes, but they do have a lot of pressure from them. Yeah, and it's also Tristana, right? I mean, we were saying that you uh, link up with the Rift Herald, and that's going to be a lot of structures going down very quickly. They drop it immediately for this first tower and keep a shot. Oh. Look at that damage. Uh, oh, they're just going for the engage. Okay, Dank, uh, Tank Wings is going to have to try to join here. You do get the lockdown. Oh, He's that? caught out, though. They are fully overextended. And speaking out, they're sprawled out. Taco are able to pick one off. But the members of the are getting a little bit low. He got a double kill already for Concept. He's getting very strong right now on the Jacks. Last one will go down. Ludacia actually dodged the out of multiple members. Will's just trying to beat down Odad. Finally does. Gives them the thumbs up. And AoE are looking at a tier two now. Yeah, I mean, we were saying the Rift Herald, you link it up with Justana, it's going to be good. You link it up with Ash, the result is just the same. Still a ton of damage coming through. And this one was AoE starting the fight once again. Now, that's not the entire reason why they win this one. They do have a lot of gold, but the amount of pressure they put in the back line is immense. The fact that Ona and Lunacia come around to at least trade the Justana out means that there's there's some some hope coming through, but immediately after that, you see that Team Fish Taco they have to split, whereas the AOE core still able to move together. Really chaotic fight that ended up well piloted yep. by AOE, and the fact that the Rift Herald stayed alive that entire time to get a ton of chunking onto the top tier two, just even more given over to AOE in terms of pressure on the map. You now have two and a half items, almost three for Dark Wings on the Tristana. And yes, you've got two items now for spawn, but it's not the damage profile you need for Taco right now. Yeah, I, this is absolutely a spot where Teamfish Taco, they gotta find some upfront burst. They gotta just kill someone outright. And unfortunately, the items that they have built for that are not equipped for that. Uh, Onat, with the Hextech Rocket Belt makes the engages a little bit more consistent, but not going to be nearly as powerful. And while Spawn will be doing a lot of damage with his burst, I mean, it's just it's just not there. Okay, this is what we're talking about, though. Spawn okay. able to start the catch out, and they do find at least Breezy, but is it going to be enough as the Counter-Strike comes through Lunacia? Has gotten out with his life. Rose Thorn can't say the same, but AoE are going right back on the Baron. One for one, not bad, but it's double Marksman and a Jax turning around for the Baron. They are going to do this lightning quick with no opportunity for Roaster to go for a smite steal and no ulters from Team Fish Taco. Anybody who comes over, more likely to die than to get a kill. Onat realizes that. Uh, it's like, oh, you yeah. know, well, I'll get you next time. I'll see you on the other side <laughs> as the Turo Baron buff comes alive for AoE gold. So many opportunities. You see Team Fish Taco actually ping towards the top lane turret saying, hey, maybe if we get that, you know, that's a that's some free objective bounties right is, there. Is he just walking through Rodeo Drive right now saying, I want this, I want that, just walking around, you know, Tristana things? Honestly, you lost me with that reference, but I'm going to oh, say yes. Sad. Just sh window shopping. Window shopping. Yeah. Just say, you know, I, I want this thing. Let's go get it. Well, I want right. this thing. Let's go I get it. I want that thing. I want that thing. And now the answer is I want the dragon. So <laughs> AoE should be moving over towards that. And I think it is worth noting that this might be the game where it is 
Lynx contributing to a lot of their fights even more, right? We've been saying that Will, Darkwings, and Breezy have been moving together as a unit, and that's where a lot of their wins have come from so far. But now, yeah. Lynx is also at all of these fights. That might have been the missing ingredient, right? AoE are currently sitting in last at only four wins, but when Lynx is able to join up with the rest of the squad, suddenly, that extra little bit of damage is so much better. And it's so interesting it's what buffer, this does for the composition of AoE, right? Like, Lynx has been the carry, can be the carry, but we've also had question marks raise his way. And the fact that you're able to share that burden with a man like Darkwings in the mid lane who is so good at being a carry, we've seen it in his past and his time on Dignitas as well. And I, I think that specifically this Ash really unlocking AoE. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, nice tries. Uh, both teams going for uh, engages that have not worked out, almost stopping the Turo Baron buff from being effective, but it's still AoE with Concept knocking on the doors of the base. And I'm looking at Ona, his flash is almost back up. If he can find an engage, it could go well still. They've got to be grouped up or you got to find the right member. It's got to be Darkwings or Lynx. I feel like it can't be anybody else, but it is Concept getting mid lane tower. So an inhib open to bear. Onat, you see, he's just looking for one of these two, oh. but he can't do it. Now he's just slowed down, gonna have to flash. That's the defensive flash, not an offensive one. Oh. He needs to get in range. Magus oh, from NXI is big. That's actually kind of huge, but the health bars say no. Lynx is gonna flash away. They're starting to get picked off in the back line. Now the concept has joined. Lunasia hyping to take down everyone from AoE, but Will can't say anything left. He flashes away and Spot and Onat plus Lunasia make a winning combo in the fight for Taco. Dude, it's so Jover immediately as they start going in. NXI and Rosethorn sinking up finally in these big fights. And even though they're down over 10,000 gold, the engage that comes through from Team Fish Taco is immaculate. The big thing, they catch Dark Wings. He's not able to buffer a jump out. He goes down super early. And yes, Ash is free firing for a lot of the fight, but as soon as Lunasia gets on top of the AD carry, there's no damage left here for AOE. At the very least, the Turo Baron buff opens up the opposing side of the map, but that's Team Fish Taco. They're going to be getting a lot of bounties off that fight. I will also just say, Lynx is not the big damage dealer right he's now. An he's, an he's an Ash, He's an Ash. He just he ults and he pokes you down and makes you slow so the Dark Wings can take you out. So the big target is Dark Wings and they yeah. found their mark. Yeah, you hear that, Alex? Alex was saying, yeah, Ash does a lot of damage. It's like, well, <laughs> Kind of, like <laughs> you do a little bit, but the big thing is so much later. Uh, I will agree, like later yeah, on, like eventually, full build eventually. Ash, absolutely. But this is two items, and still, we, we should not overstate though that AoE are still in a dominating position. That was a once a game kind of fight coming out from <laughs> Team Fish Taco. They got to make a once a game happen multiple times in this game, and now AoE they still have all of their structures standing. Yes, you get the bounty by taking down the dragon. But you gotta, we gotta be landing those ultimates. I think that's the third one that we have seen Team Fish Taco throw out and just not get anything done. And now they're looking for Will. Oh, they might get a little bit of a second okay. in a game fight going oh on. Reese, he makes it out alive. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. Here comes Dark oh, Wings no. over the edge. He's got the bomb going. Reset's coming through. And Lynx is doing his job. Run. He's slowing him down. This is exactly the game plan every time. Lynx sets him up. Dark Wings knocks him down. A double kill for Will as Lunasia is finding a solo bolo on the concept. His base is burning. Oh my god, as soon as the engage comes through, it doesn't catch on to the important members. It's just all on the tanks. There's not enough damage to throw AoE uncontested. Lunasia, can he even leave? Yes. <laughs> yes, he can. Yes. He is Cassante. Uh, <laughs> that champion still is extremely mobile. And this is a potential... Mo okay. It will get it out with a nice little Arctic Assault from Will. <laughs> Did some shaking the chains of corruption Ooh. there. And uh, Will, you're not making it out of that one alive. I mean, but we got to see some of the shades of uh, burst that Spawn can do in this game. But AoE, still, they've recovered a lot of the build gold lead that they had built for themselves, take away a bunch of the jungle, and with the Nether Baron spawning here in about 40 seconds, that should be where AoE is going to make or break the game. They will back away, they will spend all of the gold that they have just earned for themselves. We see, oh, what does Darkwings want? He was hovering the Hex Drinker before. <laughs> He's going to continue to go for that. And of course, now Link's on three completed items, has a stopwatch. This guy is so fast, man. As soon as he tags you once, yeah. he's not letting you leave. 
it's going to be very difficult to escape the clasping hands of AoE here. But we do that's have a Baron. Maybe uh, some flippage action going on here. That's always the potential for a team that's behind. Uh, but also the fact that Taco have been able to stay at uh, arm's length with the dragon stacking as well does buy them a little bit of time in that regard. You also now have three items for spawn with that Rift Maker. So maybe there's some things coming online, but it's still an 8,000 gold deficit that they have to yeah. dig out of. Also trying to figure out what it is that Onet is building. Because he's got a <laughs> Fiendish Codex and just purchased a needlessly large rod. I guess just the most efficient thing you can buy when you know that you are about to go for a potential game-ending play. Look at that. Mm. Same game plan, looks like, from King mm -hmm. Taco. I, I haven't been doing it, but... Uh, uh, there he goes, another static shiv. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. A bit of a catch. Concept. Mm -hmm. Looking at a flank, but definitely doesn't want it. Okay, he's going to go for it. He got NXI taking that big glacial prison. And Concept, whoa. <laughs> Concept's just gone. Maybe the item build is starting to come online here for Taco. They still got a heavy fight. They still got two ADCs to deal with, but they've taken out one of them. And now Darkwing's caught up. He does get the flash rocket jump combo, but Taco, they're answering the fights and overextensions of AoE beautifully. We gonna get the scream yet, Josh? Have you broken? Uh, I think Josh is broken. <laughs> Josh, Josh has uh, has uh, died from the trauma of uh, what is happening. But uh, Taco, they actually want to try to make something happen here with the Baron going down. Will is around the pit but can't get inside, and it's actually Rose Thorn that gets the Baron. Taco, though, they still got to deal with Dark Wings as he's trying to make it out alive. You got the back being started up by NXI. Should be able to make it out of there. Hey, we turning around a little bit. Oh, Chains of Crops just speaking to turn around. Taco's going for it as Will gets caught out. Tries to go back in. Look at Dark Wings. Dark Wings doing some work. Concepts coming up the back. Dark Wings trying to get resets here. V spawn can't get him. Rocket jump in and he gets two. Give him three. And that's a big for AoE. Again, teleporting into the base, taking down his former teammate spawn. Oh, Dark Wings. NXI. Oh, 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 what? What? Oh, NXI. What the solo moto. Well, well, I don't know what happened during uh, some of those big fights, but I do know that that was the hardest <laughs> script. As now it is Lynx's turn to walk into the base, clean up all these minions, and take isn't the it, actual Nexus turrets. Isn't it so great? <laughs> Dark Wings is the one with all the gear no potential, way. but Lynx gets to be there at the end, no but does it? NXI is literally pulling this game from the brink and denying AoE game one. Okay, hey, we, we're gonna have to talk about that when you guys play it. Just I thought a the gameplay broke you. <laughs> no, I mean, okay, so I just like disconnected as soon as the concept died, right, in the fight in the mid lane. But I'm back now. And I didn't see anything from that until Dark Wing started Goomba stomping on the fight. Okay, well, uh, AoE got caught and lost a lot of things in mid lane. And, right. uh, and, and then they came back. Uh, nice. Just like that. So, uh, third dragon does go over to AoE. You see Dark Wings slash hashtags Dank Wings. My deepest the, taco uh, has the Turo Baron buff? They did. I did it the first time. But they do have the, another Turo Baron buff. Nice. Well, now, yeah, I mean, every time it happens, right? We just get to see what happens. But so far, AoE, they were up about 12,000 gold. Team Fish Taco had the, what we were saying was the once per game fight. Now it looks like they're able to do it more than once per game. They are preying super heavily on AoE being too aggressive with these fights. And crucially, Spawn has been getting so many of these kills, racking up a ton of damage. And now the burst that Spawn can do will actually take yeah. out like 75% of Will's HP. It doesn't matter how much armor or how much HP you have because it's doing percent HP and it's doing so much of it every time. Yeah, he's got four items now as well. He has been the centerpiece in a lot of these catch out moments. NXI getting his own there as the Chains of Corruption was used. They are still losing a lot of pressure in mid lane, but here they come to try to get it engaged. Rose Thorn finding oh, Arctic is not there for Will, and he also missed that Glacial Prison. This is pretty big as Darkwings was nowhere nearby. And what is happening to AoE right now? Even though Concept gets one, it's multiple catchouts consecutively for Taco. Dude, 
I mean, we said that there's one way Team Fishtaco win games, when they blow out their opponent's back. And so far, they're going one by one, catching everybody out every single time. They're moving around as a goon squad. They're catching one army. They're catching another opportunity. And every single time, AoE, they are just not in a position where they have the damage to go for these fights right now. It definitely feels as though Team Fish Taco, these are the scrappy kids in spawn continuing to build up more and more gold. That's what I got to highlight, man. This guy's spawn coming in here, just making it happen on this Varus pick. And it was something that they wanted to go for yeah. in the draft, right? It's something they took priority in. And it's working out so far as a game that should not be working out for them is starting to turn in their favor. And it, it is literally coming off of spawn being the damage center, but also a nice little catch out potential for them, too. We do have to note, though, that the first turret of the game just went down for Team Fish Taco there in the top lane, right? That's one of the biggest worrying parts is that as this game goes later and later, uh, you just have a lot of space that you need to make up, right? As long as your waves are on Team Fish Taco's side of the map, it is so hard for Team Fish Taco to actually end games off of these fights, to even get objectives off of these fights because of how far they've been pushed up. But now, AoE, surely, surely this time, they will uh, have all their tools in the same place. See another tower go. That's all that standing gold is starting to go the way of Taco, though. As uh, you actually have an engage under tower, Magnusor coming in as well, and Will just can't move. But they've got a front to back now with Concept rejoining the fight. This is exactly what AoE wanted. Dankwings. The goes down. You got Dankwings starting to light up Dankwings. the scene right now. Oh, that getting caught. And now you got Darkwings looking forward and looking for the plays. He's got a double kill for Lynx, and he's shutting down the rest. AOE destroy game one after almost fumbling the bag. <laughs> It, it took them a little while to figure out how to win the game, but they're going to do it this time. There's no NXI to stop them. There's no NXI to get multiple kills and stall out this one. AoE, they close it out. It takes them a little bit longer than maybe it needed to, but AoE still finding another win in this series. Going to 5 and 12, and finally finding an opportunity to close out that fight. Cause <laughs> what in it, it was, they had us in the Ooh. first half, man. I I don't know. That was a that was dicey situation, but the fact that they were able to take out the win still is of utmost importance, right? Being able to pilot that early lead into a win, look at that double marksman composition and say both Lynx and Dark Wings kind of popped off in that game. It was incredible. And maybe the gold graph uh, isn't going to necessarily represent as much of that domination as AoE would have had through a majority of that. It was still a decent fight back from yeah. Taco and specifically Spawn. Oh yeah, Spawn, Rose Thorn, right? Even though Spawn was doing all the damage, we do have to praise the people who are actually getting the fight started. Rose Thorn and NXI throwing their bodies onto the fire. And, uh, you know, I I'm expecting that the AoE coach will have some words about what happened, you know, from minute 22 to, uh, what is that, minute 30, 33? <laughs> There's a couple of things <laughs> Just, uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of things. But a little still, things to pay attention to. Yeah, one step at a time here for AoE. That was a definitely much needed win as we start closing out the first round, Robin. Well, before we go to break, do gotta give a huge shout out to Turo because the LCS Challengers League is brought to you by Turo, the world's largest car sharing marketplace where you can book any car you want. Can be a fun car, could be an old car, could be a new car. Could be my just car. Just about any occasion. If you want to take pictures, you want to go on a road trip, whatever you need to do, if you just need to get to work as well, forget about boring car rentals and try Turo.com. We'll see you on the other side of this break.